Either one, it would have to get to the point where those networks cannot find a black person to take their deal. So we're in unison there, like nobody's taking your deal. Or we as consumers would say, if you put out a certain type of content, we are not watching, period. Hi everybody, welcome to the Dino Black Creators Kickback. I'm Darnell. And I'm Melissa. And we're the creators and executive producers of the Do You Know Black Game Show and the Do You Know Black Kickback. In the last episode of Do You Know Black Kickback, our contestants were asked if we have the right to limit or censor black creativity or art for the good of the greater black community. So Alyssa, I'm gonna let you answer that question first. However, to give a little bit of context, uh, this is surrounding the Shonda Rhimes lineup known as TGIT that featured various shows, including Scandal and How to Get Away with Murder. The controversy was around how Viola Davis and Kerry Washington's characters were being portrayed and if it was good for the black community or black women. So with that, Alyssa, I will let you kick off the conversation. Do you think that we have a right to censor or limit black creators and their art? No, um, to put it simply, I don't. I completely agree with Dara when she mentioned the fact that, you know, white people have the ability to be as messy as they want on television and black people should be granted that same grace to show the spectrum of characters that we have to offer. I think that it is important context to understand that at the time that this lineup came about um, with Scandal to, to kick it off, Carrie Washington's character was the first character in 40 years, the first black female lead on a network television drama. And I think it's important to note that because we hadn't seen ourselves in so long that by the time that we had that platform when the show came out, people were very protective of how we were represented. Other black people were very protective of how we were represented. We hadn't seen ourselves in so long. We didn't know what other opportunities were gonna come up. So I feel like I can understand why in that moment we felt like we're the only ones out here. This is the only show we have at the moment. We need to be very, um, very careful about how we're being perceived. That show was watched by millions and millions of, of, of people. And the idea that you could have a character like Olivia Pope, who's very brilliant, she's witty, she's smart, but at the same time, she's having an affair with the president, you know, a, a, a white president, I felt like there, I can understand why people were a little bit taken aback by that because it felt like we're taking three steps forward and now two steps back because she's not this perfect character. So I can understand where they came from, but I do believe that we should have the freedom to represent ourselves in all of the, you know, in all of our glory and all of our flaws. I think that the more representation that we're able to see, the more we can kind of deflect on some of the past experiences in which we've had where we have felt like we've been boxed into certain characters. There's only one way to do that, and that's to get away from that. And that's to represent ourselves across the board, no matter how fantastical or how out of the box or how crazy and flawed the characters are. Hmm. So, um, so, so with that said, you said something that I think is the first point that we have to address, which is a lot of times what we say is if white people can do this, then I should be able to do this. And in in the world that we want to live in and in the world that we are we are trying to work towards building i think that that is the case right um i want our kids grandkids to be able to do the same things that anybody else does but the reality of the the war the the fight the battle the struggle that we have every day is that like i would say to no fault of our own we are behind to no fault of our own. And when you're playing from behind, when you're trying to catch up, whether it's financially, um, situationally, relationally, whatever it is, there are certain 
luxuries that people that are ahead have that you may not have. So I think that it's always interesting when we look at our situation as a community and we, we kind of jump to saying, hey, we want that, not realizing that there are these other things that are happening culturally that make that type of that type of luxury unavailable to us in the exact moment. So I think that there could be some of those people who are commenting on that saying, hey, listen, we, we understand it would be great to be able to take any character and show any kind of character in any environment, but we're still trying to like, there are certain things that we're still trying to do. And if you're portraying and you're using your platform in a certain type of way, then like, you're not necessarily contributing to the cause. I think that's what some people might say. Do I disagree? Do I agree with it? No, like maybe some components, but I think that that might be the argument that some people would make um, when, when Adara or you say that like white people get to be messy all the time. It's the same reason why like growing up, my mother, I, 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 used, I used to hate this so much. Like whenever we had yearbook pictures, like my mom would always make me dress up in like church clothes. I hated it as well as a Haitian. Like I hated it. I had to go to church in like church clothes. I had to go to school in church clothes and everybody else was wearing regular clothes. Even at like my, I remember at my graduation, like the eighth grade graduation, I had to wear like, my mom had me in the eighth grade graduation in a three piece suit <laughs> in eighth grade graduation. Everybody else was just wearing regular clothes. I was in like a three piece suit. I was so embarrassed. But like, which, and there's a lot of other things that we'll probably get into another time, the type of school I went to, et cetera. But her whole thing was like, you don't have the luxury that these other people have. And that's kind of like the mindset that she always had. She never said it was fair. She just said, that's the reality. So that's what some people might say to, to your comment and Dara's comment. So I'll let you re rebut uh, to, to my comment. I'm not necessarily going to rebut because I don't disagree with you in the sense and I'm to go back to what I said. I'm saying this with the privilege of time. I did not necessarily feel this way in 2013, 14 because again, it was the only show at the time. Now it's such a, it seems so far away and it seems like such a, a, a common thing now. It, but at the time it was like groundbreaking. There literally was nothing else on TV at the time that had other black women leading. It was like a big movement just even seeing that. So at that moment, I can again understand why people felt that way because when that's the only representation you have and you don't know when you're gonna have a chance to have that platform again to tell other stories, because I, I think part of the argument is that the more representation you have, that creates more space for other people to showcase their diverse stories later on down the line. You know, if we, but at the same time, if we don't even get to that point, if this show fails or it's so, it's received so poorly for her portrayal, then that could hinder another show getting green lit uh, by another black creator down the line. So again, at the time, I can understand why people felt that way because we didn't know when we were gonna have the next opportunity to even be able to showcase our flaws in that way. We can look back on this now in 2022 and 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 with all of the slew of shows that have come after that, you know, the not only the Insecures, but the Atlantas and all of these other uh, shows that were led by black people and were very nuanced and different than what we had seen before that. I think that um, the, the reason that I can understand why that argument what your argument was in terms of of we don't have that luxury it's it's because it's true we we don't necessarily have that luxury and i think you brought up a good point and the fact that sometimes we skip to well white people have this why can't we have this not understanding the fact that like they also have 10 other shows on at the same time to buffer that representation. We didn't have that. There's only one. And we kind of, in America, we get lost in the fact that everyone else, even though the world doesn't revolve around the US, a lot of other people way, especially people who've never been here before, like they get their 
their understanding of black people through the representation that they see on TV. So if that's the only show that's on air and that's the only show that they're exposed to, if they're exposed to, uh, to black people through our depictions as gang bangers or, or all of us live in the hood or all of us are living in poverty, like if that's the only things that they're exposed to, uh, you know, outside of the country, that's how they're receiving us, how they're perceiving us. And I think that is important to note that when we don't have that representation, you kind of do have to be a little bit mindful about what you are putting out there, knowing that this is something that could influence how other people are perceiving us, if that's the only representation that they have access to of us. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that, and that's that's all valid. And, and obviously, there, there's no perfect answer in this situation. I, I do think that uh, autonomy, freedom, um, and, and flexibility to be able to do and create the way that you want to create would be the default position. But then, like with anything, we always think about like, what is the implications of that? You bring up a great point about the what, what you're really talking about is scale. And what I mean by scale is that where we are as creatives and as I think, and feel free to disagree with me here, um, which I know you would anyway, <laughs> but uh, when it comes to platforms, the, the issue is that we always are, we, we are subject to white created platforms for, for our content. So when it comes to where like the money comes from, the funding comes from all these different places, even though there are thousands upon thousands of extremely gifted and talented directors and producers and writers and all of this stuff, right? There's such a small amount of that that actually gets through to get to that platform. And then you oftentimes, just like in corporate, where you might be the only black person on your entire floor, your show might be the only white, uh, the only black show on the entire network. Right. But so that type, what ends up coming with that being alone at the top, there's a lot of pressure, right? There's that saying heavy lies the crown. So there's a lot of pressure there too. And the problem becomes when you're the only one, it's the goal is how do you make sure that you're not the only one? How do we make sure that there are more opportunities for black creatives to tell these stories so we don't have to latch on to one of them like you are our hope you are our key you are our doorway and if you fail then like the the opportunity the door closes for everybody else behind you and by the way it also damages the community because of x y and c that's a lot of pressure to put on a creator and it's not the creator's fault that they're the only one. It's really the system's fault, right? That they're the only one. So I think that type of pressure that we put on, it's, we're putting the pressure in the wrong space. We're putting the pressure in that situation on the creator instead of on the platforms or or the other, other entrepreneurial, uh, Entrepreneurial, entrepreneurially driven initiatives that can create platforms where there are opportunities for a larger number of black created concepts um, where we can kind of differentiate how we're represented. So I know that was kind of like a roundabout way of saying it, but there's platform and then there's creator. And then sometimes we put too much pressure on the creator. I, I agree with that. And I think uh, not to sound like a, a hypocrite but while yes g going back to the original question do i believe like we should have the freedom to be you know to be as messy as we want tell the type of stories that we want i do believe that do i think we're at that point yet where we can fully do that not necessarily um but at the same time i do think that we have a responsibility to an extent to the type of content we're creating I feel like while yes, we should be able to tell every other type of story. And I was, I, I didn't disagree with the fact that Scandal was, was out there because regardless of how flawed 
you know, people might have found Olivia Pope's uh, storyline and her character, it was still very different. You know, it was a completely un, kind of unrealistic in a sense in terms of like a TV show. Like you knew you were watching fiction because it was like over the top, the storylines. So you can just completely get lost in the story because it's like, it's, it's, it's fantastical. You're like, oh, this is not really gonna happen like in real life. Where I think that I, I have an issue with is when, fight me if you want, but with lazy storytelling with you kind of falling into tropes. Like, do you have the right to, or should you be, should we be censoring creators who only want to tell the same type of story where they're like, okay, I'm going to do a gangbanger story. Like I love, I, I love the, the, the gangster type movies. I'm going to make this movie or I'm going to make this, the story about living in the hood. I'm going to do, unless you're doing something different at like, creating or providing a different perspective. I feel like we've seen these types of stories already, even with the whole idea of back in the day where the issue was these mammy, these storylines where everybody who's black is either a mammy or some type of servant in some sort of um, subservient role. To me, I find that to be lazy. Those were created by white people though, right? So we're falling into where they felt comfortable placing us. I feel like as black, creators, you have a responsibility to think about the perspectives that you could offer and how you're telling that story. Um, I think I always think back to when they were talking about the Cosby show when it first came out. And I think um, initially Cliff Huxtable's role, he was a, he was a plumber. And I forget what Claire's role was, but it was something, it was, you know, it, there's nothing wrong with it. They were just working class roles, but he was very specific in saying like, I wanted to make him a doctor. I wanted to make her, a, she was a lawyer. And he was very specific about that. And we attached to that, you know, as black people, that was something that we were very proud of. The fact that we were able to be depicted in, in, in a higher light, you know, we were able to be depicted as professionals. It was something that we didn't see a lot. He could have easily fell into a trope of like, okay, this is a, uh, not to say anything bad about the show, but like good times. Some people did not like the show because of how it portrayed black people as, you know, the idea of we're living in poverty, whether or not that was the truth or not is beside the, is beside the point. If you're looking for to TV as a way to escape and it's, it's a fictional show, you can make up anything. You could literally have made them the Jeffersons living in, in luxury. So I think that when I say the idea of being lazy and falling into like the stereotypes, I think that we do have a responsibility to think very carefully before we put these characters out is this something that's going to add value to our community could i tell this story a different way and would it change the story and i think that that's something that you know some creators don't necessarily do they might want to latch on to some popular idea or something that they feel like has been you know part of our culture let me attach to this yeah, so. yeah. and the, the question also becomes Ownership, because I think, and we speak about this in other episodes as well, but I always, for me, as a consumer, I, I don't absolve myself of responsibility as a consumer, right? So, um, for example, in these situations, now, I, I think we obviously, we use TGIT as an example uh, in this situation because everything that we do in the kickback is associated with the game show and props. Like, I mean, it, it's amazing what Viola Davis did, um, Kerry Washington did, Shonda Rhimes, like it, it's just props all around and I'm, I'm extremely happy with what they did and how they did it. Um, so this is more so of a conversation starting topic. Uh, but I, I think generally speaking, when you think about the theme of that, um, one of the things that Rich mentioned, right, when, when they were talking about the types of shows is he was saying that studios, they have their notes and they give you their notes. And the reality is, is like these studios, they have their da data analysts. So they have data analytics, data science, you know, they have their, all their metrics and, and their research that says, hey, this is what's going to work. This is what people are going to watch. This is what people that this is what's going to get the most revenue possible, right? For our advertisers or for whoever, right? This is what's not going to, this is what is going to align with our advertisers, audiences, etc. So 
Now, either maybe that's what their data says, or maybe that's what their perception of the community is. So, so it could be either or. So let's just assume for now that the non-malicious side of this where their data says that, right? That their data says that this is how like we, uh, how black people are portrayed in a way that can be profitable for these studios. The power that we have in those types of situations, I, I do think that a lot of it is that when you're a creator and you go to these places, we've had some of these conversations already with different businesses, with different organizations, which we'll talk about a little bit shortly, but they'll push back and they'll ask very plain questions about impressions, clicks. They'll look at what, what it takes for them to be successful. And they'll push back on you and say, hey, this is what we want. This is what we're gonna put on our network. And then a lot of times you as a creative who's trying to, to pave a way, who's trying to get a deal, you'll have the choice of you saying, yes, like we can do this show your way or pitching something that you think is gonna be palatable to these networks and that can actually close a deal or you can walk away. So there's two things that would have to happen. Either one, it would have to get to the point where those networks cannot find a black person to take their deal. So we're in unison there, like nobody's taking your deal. Or we as consumers would say, if you put out a certain type of content, we are not watching, period. So these are the two, one of the two things that have to happen. But that puts a certain type of pressure on us as consumers and on us as black people to be in unison. And as long as there's either one black face or creator that's willing to take the deal that everybody else said no to, or there's a critical mass of black consumers who are willing to consume that and give them their metrics, then there's never going to be any incentive for these networks or these studios to change. I mean, I think, you know, kind of tying into that, the thing that we don't really think about is, yes, sometimes we have, we're, we're put in a box in which we're forced to, to create the content that these networks are looking for, where they might say, you know, can you be a little bit more like this? We're looking for something that's kind of telling this story and you, you're forced to, as a black creator, you know, change your story or fit your your vision to what the network is looking for in order to even make it to television. But on the flip side, and this may just be, you know, something that's come out of time being in 2022 and working within this space, I've seen where networks are so thirsty for content, they'll take whatever is pitched. So I think there does lie a responsibility in that where they're trusting this creator they're looking for diverse content. And so they're trusting that this creator is that's created this show is creating something that the black audience is looking for. So if they come to the network and they're saying, you know, I have this great pitch for the show about a powerful drug dealer, they're taking a chance that, oh, wow, the black audience coming from a black creator, I feel like this is something that the black audience is looking for. And, 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 you know, we'll see whether or not that show is successful or not. But again, I think that puts the pressure, the onus on the creator to make sure that they're ready for what comes with that. You know, what they're pitching is something that is, is going to be valuable to, to television. And again, I always go back to the point of asking, are you adding value here? Yes, we're here to entertain. You have the ability to create something that you feel like is gonna be really entertaining to the, to the community. But knowing that we're still in a space where content isn't being picked up in droves by, by black people, they're searching for content, but we might get a couple, a handful of shows out of at a pilot season. We might even get too, you know, so I think that we still have to be very mindful that they're taking our word now even more critically as black creators. Uh, we're representing the community and what they envision the black people want. They being the networks um, taking our word for it as creators. So I feel like we do need to be very mindful because you mess around and that show actually gets picked up and what you're presenting out there is how, again, we're going to be perceived. Yeah. But I think that there's, and I could be wrong with how, how this stuff works. There's, 
It doesn't really take much for a network to pick something up, but it does take a lot for a network for a network to invest in making that thing pop. Right. So, so there's a different, it takes nothing. Like sometimes I feel like these networks or, or companies or whatever it is, it's almost like they're just gambling with our content, right? Like they're, they're gambling with our creation. It's like, oh yeah, yeah, sure. I'll buy this. I'll buy that. Like, you know, and you know, we'll, we'll play some crafts with your, with your content and then see if it hits or not. But there's a huge difference between, uh, because marketing matters. Like, how are you telling that story? How are you engaging the people? How are you ensuring that the story is like optimal? Um, how, how are you communicating the value of that story and why it should be existing? So a lot of times like they can pick up something, but if they're not putting the dollars behind marketing that, that uh, program, then it's gonna fail. We've seen, and I don't know why it slipped my mind now, but I think like there have been different interviews that have been done, like really good interviews with, um, with you know, very well-known actors and actresses uh, that spoke about how, yeah, their show ended up getting canceled. You know, we were getting good ratings, like people liked the show, but you know, for some reason they just went in a different direction. Um, I, I think that that was, um, it was J I think maybe Jason Weaver was talking about that in, uh, in one of his interviews. I think it was with Comedy Hype maybe. Um, and he was just talking about how like, yeah, we were getting like really good uh, re ratings for, I think it was Smart Guy or one of the shows. And, but they just wanted to go in a different direction. And so that happens sometimes too, where, so it, it's kind of like interesting, the difference between creating something that's for the people creating something that networks are willing to pick up, creating something that networks are willing to market. And then I start thinking about, well, why are they willing to market certain types of things?